The Eternal Struggle is a new amulet, which was added in 318. Now, I know it's not quite as sexy as Ashes of the Stars or Crystallized Omniscience, and so far has been very underrated, and as a result it works as a great budget item, which can improve almost any build in Path of Exile. This is because it solves a lot of problems which you normally wouldn't be able to fix via an amulet slot, such as spell suppression. This value is further increased by the fact that it can grant either 15% cull or malignant madness, but a little more about that later. I think the main reason that the Eternal Struggle flew under the radar is there's so much variance. Getting two Eldritch Implicits, which positively affect your build, isn't going to be that easy. So a large number of amulets simply won't be good. To make it a little more complicated, the amulet could be dominated by the wrong influence. If it rolled the perfect Implicits as a damage amulet, but it's Eater of Worlds dominated, it's still not going to be that good. On the other hand, the base stats aren't all that bad. And because the amulet has so much variance, people often overlook the value of a well-rolled Eternal Struggle. I noticed that early in 3.18, it was hovering around 5 Chaos. And this amulet is far better than most of the 5C rares that people were wearing early in 3.18. So today, I'm going to be talking about the Eternal Struggle, breaking down the stats that it has, talk about why it's good, and of course, give some insight onto what builds I think might be using it as either a cheap alternative to something like Ashes of the Stars, or maybe as your permanent endgame item. To start off with, how do the Implicits work? This amulet is dropped by the Black Star and the Infinite Hunger. All versions that are dropped by the Black Star are dominated by the Searing Exarch. This means the Searing Exarch Implicit is of a higher tier than the Eater of Worlds modifier. If it's dropped by the Infinite Hunger, on the other hand, the Eternal Struggle will be dominated by Eater of Worlds. This means the Eater of Worlds Implicit is higher tier than the Searing Exarch modifier. This is important because you can't change which influence is dominant. Once it drops, well, it's fixed that way forever. If you use a Divine Orb, you will be able to change the other explicit properties, but it won't change the implicits. And a Blessed Orb will reroll the values of the implicits, but won't change what they actually do. And speaking of those explicits, the Eternal Struggle has very interesting base stats. 10 to 15% increased global defenses effectively means 10 to 15% increased armor, evasion, ward, and energy shield. And then it also grants 20 to 40 strength, dexterity, and intelligence, which means if you're using your amulet as some sort of stat fixing, it's very good at that. It can have up to 40 all attributes. Finally, the Eternal Struggle grants one of two effects based on which influence dominates it. If it's Searing Exarch dominated, which means it was dropped by the Black Star, your hits instantly kill enemies at 15% or lower life. You can kind of think of this as Super Cull, since normally Culling Strike kills enemies at 10% or lower life, but additionally, this will make it a little bit easier to work Culling Strike into your build. Let's say you're using a Culling Strike support. Well, that's a gem link. You could always switch that gem link to something else, maybe cast when damage taken to automate a guard skill, or maybe an additional defense so that you're a little bit tankier. Something like Frost Shield comes to mind. Or maybe you want to use it so that your movement skill has Arcane Surge, thus granting you more damage. These days, it feels like you're linked starved on almost every build in Path of Exile, so being able to free up a link while still having the effect of Culling Strike is quite nice. And for some builds, you're so socket starved that you can't really fit Culling Strike in anyway, in which case, this functions as a 15% more damage modifier. Something that I think is far more overlooked, but arguably the more powerful effect, is Malignant Madness. This only appears on versions of the Eternal Struggle, which are dominated by the Eater of Worlds. When you deal a crit strike, you will inflict Malignant Madness, which cause enemies to have 10% reduced action speed and deal 10% reduced damage. And this is an incredible defensive layer. Against bosses, this is kind of like having Blasphemy in Feeble and Blasphemy Temp Chains, permanently at all times except if enemies have something like reduced effect of your curses as a map mod, this won't be affected by that. It'll just do 10% either way. One of the great things about Malignant Madness is it's not only reduced action speed, making it easier to avoid enemy skills and causing them to use them less frequently, but it's also damage reduction, which means when you do fail to dodge that mechanic, well, you'll get hit, but there's a better chance that you won't die. So overall, the Eternal Struggle is an excellent item, especially for the price that it currently held throughout all of 318. 
that being between 5 and 15 chaos, with that value going up higher depending on the rolls and the implicits. But if you only need a basic one, you're not looking to spend a lot here. And so, unless it's made significantly rarer, or some other aspect of the amulet changes, I expect it to be a very good budget item in leagues going forwards. Next up, I'm going to be talking about what builds might want to use an Eternal Struggle, either early on or as an endgame item. Or, at the very least, what effects synergize well with it. Before I do though, a quick reminder that if you found this video helpful, please do leave a like. If you want to see more content, such as a method you could use to earn more money earlier on in a Path of Exile League, then get subscribed and ring that bell to be notified whenever I upload. On the other hand, if you like other games, maybe you like roguelites, dungeon crawlers, or shop sims, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, as I'm going to be reviewing a game that checks all of those boxes. Link will be down in the description below, and also the card right now. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members for the continued support. For now though, let's go back to talking about the Eternal Struggle. So what builds might want to use this item? Well, like I mentioned before, at 5 Chaos, it's better than pretty much anything that you can get early league. Now if enough people buy it, obviously the price will rise. However, early on in a league, there's going to be a lot of players who are looking to defeat either the Black Star or the Infinite Hunger, because you need to do so to progress your Atlas missions. So I suspect quite a few will be generated, but who should be using it depends on what version of the item that you're actually using. Like I said before, it's incredibly high variance. So for example, let's say you're a melee build, a bow build, a wander, or an attack build. You don't scale very well off of having a plus one gem amulet. This is a perfect use for the Eternal Struggle, since it's effectively 15% more damage if you can't otherwise fit in culling strike. Or if you're a squishy wander or bow build, the Malignant Madness is a very nice defensive layer. Additionally, I mentioned earlier that it has up to 15% global defenses. So if you're using the Unholy Trinity of Determination, Grace, and Defiance banner, now it's scaling all of your defenses all at once. On the other hand, this also makes it a very effective amulet for an energy shield based build, because it's 15% increased energy shield, which is about as much as you'll get on a decent early game amulet anyway. In addition, you'll get 15% armor or evasion if you're scaling those stats as well. And this is to say nothing of ward. If you're using ward, this is one of a few stats that actually scales your ward. You could go with an Eyes of a Great Wolf, but honestly, between this and Eyes of a Great Wolf, this is far more valuable. So far though, I've only really been talking about the explicit stats on the item. What if you're a spellcaster, and you have a plus one gem amulet? Is it worth swapping? I'd still say yes. After all, the Culling Strike is 15%, which is roughly 15% more damage if you don't otherwise have access to it. Plus one gems is only 10 to 12%, and using the Eternal Struggle further gives you access to interesting stats which you can use to plug holes in your build. Let's say you wanted to get a melding of a flesh setup early on. Well, you can get non-curse aura effect, which will of course scale your purity. Maybe you're using purity of elements, well non-curse aura effect is also just more res. On the other hand, you could be playing a templar. It's pretty challenging to cap spell suppression if you're a templar, especially while maintaining decent armor. But again, the eternal struggle has an implicit which rolls up to 10% if I remember correctly which might be just enough to help you reach that cap. It doesn't roll quite every implicit modifier in the entire pool. There are a few mods that are a little bit overpowered. That said, the Eternal Struggle is still a very strong item. After all, it was designed by Waggle, one of the best players in Path of Exile history, someone who's known for breaking the game. And so I'd expect nothing less. If you need a budget amulet and Eternal Struggle is still cheap, I'd definitely recommend looking into it or possibly picking one up. You can either get a cheap one with junk mods, or wait for that perfect amulet to come along. But while buying them, do be a little bit careful. Make sure you have advanced mod description enabled when buying them, and hold down alt while mousing over the item. Check to make sure it is dominated by the correct influence, otherwise you might end up buying something that's not really that useful to your build. I suggested things like non-curse or effect or spell suppression, but there's actually a pretty generous pool of both damage and defensive stats that you should probably look through. Unfortunately. I couldn't find a list of exactly which mods can and can't roll, but I'm going to leave you with one more interesting question. What happens when you corrupt an Eternal Struggle? Can you change the influence by deleting one of the mods, effectively adding a corrupted implicit instead? Or could you brick it into a rare that ends up retaining both the Searing Exarch and Eater of World modifier? And if so, what do you think the craziest item is that you could make as a result? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members.
Your support helps keep me independent and allows me to turn down things like sketchy mobile game sponsorships. You can do so for as low as $1 a month over on Patreon. Or if you want to support me completely for free, then you can join the community by hopping into my Discord, link below. If you want more content, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts. It's a place that I use to review games, ramble my way through video essays, and a lot more. Or of course, you can just click the suggested video in the card right now. I hope you learned something today, and maybe I'll see you again sometime soon.